So recently, I sent a survey inside of my Marketing Clarity community, which is a space for solopreneurs and small business marketers. It's free. I give tips. I don't want to say tricks. Digital marketing stuff. Everything's in there. I'd love to have you join me. But I sent a survey. And you're looking at it right here. I asked, would you rather write a blog post or make a video? And 100% of the respondents preferred doing a video. And, you know, it got me thinking, for most solopreneurs, for most small business marketers, writing is intimidating. And it's easier to just hit record, let it fly. Like what I'm doing right now. I get it. I totally get it. But today, I'm going to share with you the biggest mistake that most of my clients make when it comes to creating blog and video content and how to fix it. So here's the issue, specifically when we're talking about blog writing. You say, I'm going to write a blog today. And you sit down at the computer ready to go. Right? This is you. You're all bright-eyed. You're ready to go. But then it quickly turns to frustration. Right? So what you need is to approach content creation using my four P's of content creation. And they start with... Dun, 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 dun. Plan. Plan. That is the first P of content creation. Now, the most common thing clients do is, like I said, they say on some day or time, I'm going to create a blog or video. And that's kind of like saying, on this day, I'm going to create, I'm going to make a pizza. But what do you need to do before you can make a pizza? Well, you need to make sure you have all of the ingredients. You need to have a recipe. Are you going to just do a simple pepperoni pie? Are you going to add pineapple? Uh, is it going to be New York style crust, Detroit style crust? Do you know how long it has to cook and at what heat? So even though pizza is not one of the four P's of content creation, although I wish it was, it's delicious, right? I wish it was, it's not. We can learn from it. The biggest takeaway from this is that I want you to break content creation into subtasks, okay? Again, if we're looking at getting back to that pizza, right? You have to make an ingredient list. You have to go to the store. You have to prepare the ingredients. So sure, maybe you got a, a, a thing of pepperoni, but you got to chop it up. Or maybe you, you know, you got some cheese, maybe you want to grate it yourself. Or maybe it's just a fact of just getting everything put on the counter right? Ready to go. Okay. Then you need to cook it. The same can be applied to creating your content, but you know, obviously the tasks are a little different. Now, the one thing I want to kind of do a quick stop here is if you are already like, man, I, I don't even... We're at step one and I'm overwhelmed. I don't know what to plan. I don't know what to talk about. I don't know what to write about. I don't know. I don't know anything about this stuff. Um, I just want to highly recommend to you that you check out my Marketing Clarity Coaching Program. We will spend 10 weeks together. I will get you company clarity. So you will get a brand identity. You will get to know who you are. You will get content clarity. So not only will you understand what to create, how to create it, you'll have literally walk away with hundreds of different content opportunities. And finally, you will get customer clarity, which is maybe the most important when we're talking about content creation, because who are you creating this for? What are their problems? What are your solutions? If you don't have that stuff in mind, it's going to be incredibly difficult 
for you to create really compelling strategic content. So go to getmarketingclarity.com to learn more. And before we progress into the next P, this is also, you know, without going into that, one thing, I'll give you some kind of easy, easy topics that you could start with breaking down or explaining a process related to your industry or business. Talk about frequently asked questions. What do people frequently ask you about your business? Address that, make that into content. And when I say content, I'm talking about blog, video, that kind of thing. I know we're talking about the challenge of people have with blog, but I wanna say that this process, this four Ps that we're going through, this works for any type of content. It works for video also, it works for blog, it works for anything. You could review a tool or a book or a system that's related to your industry or business. You could also do a comparison post. Maybe there are uh, widely utilized tools or software or something like that in your industry that you can talk about, okay? So those are just some starter topics that you can hit. Uh, however, um, you really need and want context related to your customers, your company, and your content. So again, I recommend you go to getmarketingclarity.com to learn more about my coaching program. Okay. So the second P is produce. And when I say produce, I don't mean actual vegetables. I know we've been talking about pizza. I actually mean this is where you would create your content. Okay, this is where you are producing the content. Now, this is what I stress create your first draft. Now again, talking about blogs, right? I think a great place to start here when we're talking about your first draft is to maybe just start with an outline. What are the big topics that you wanna hit, okay? Start with that, make those topics. And a good way to think about that is maybe like, what are the headings, if you will, that you would see in your blog post? You know, what's that kind of flow look like? What is, what are the big, topics, subjects, things that you want to get across, okay? Then you can make that outline, walk away, come back, and then start to type and fill it in. Then I recommend take a break. Step away from your first draft. Now I get it, for me writing is like I get in the flow. So I just want to tell you, if you're in the flow, that's great, you can keep going, but I also highly recommend and encourage you that after you've done your first draft, you do step away, whether that be for an hour, whether that be for a day, whether that be for a week. I mean, I don't know your own schedule, but you step away and then you come back to create your final draft. So you may come back at it with fresh eyes, fresh perspective. And so I think that's something that is really valuable to do a first draft, step away, and then come back to it, revisit it with fresh eyes, fresh brain, fresh fingers, boop, 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 boop. okay? Now, this is also where you would translate your content to the web. What does that mean? Well, if we're talking about blog content, I typically write my first draft and subsequently kind of my final draft in either a Google Doc or I actually use Word. Uh, the reason I do that is because I want something, I, I, and listen, I know myself, I get distracted. If I use, uh, sometimes using Google Docs even, just the fact that I'm on the internet, I get distracted. So this is where you would take your final draft and translate it, put it onto the web. So this might mean taking that draft and putting it into WordPress as a blog, okay? Okay putting it into Squarespace, putting it into whatever your respective website is, right? Taking the text, bringing it in. And this is also where you would do things like the formatting, the links, the images, okay? So this is where you are, again, taking it from purely a written piece of words into a web piece of words, links, images, formatting, that kind of thing. Now, this also applies to video. 
I know we're talking a lot about blogs because that's where people were like, oh, I don't want to write a blog, but this is going to help you. But with video, the same thing can be applied. So creating your first draft would be recording it, right? And just recording your videos. Step away, come back, and then you'd be editing it, right? That would be kind of your final draft. For me, like maybe there's things in post-production you want to add, whether it be lower thirds or graphics or again, like links, things like that you know, um, editing it down, cutting pieces, moving things around. That's the first draft and final draft process with video. And then translating it to the web would be, if you're gonna put it on a place like YouTube, is uploading it, um, you know, adding all the respective metadata, adding all the various things that YouTube adds that you can add on for YouTube. If you're not sure about what that's all about, I do also offer a YouTube bootcamp um, that you can check out and learn more about YouTube optimization for SEO. Um, it's a, it's, it's another involved process, but let's not get too sidetracked. Okay. All right. So we've talked about plan. We've talked about produce. The third step is publish. Now this is perhaps the simplest of the four P's. But it is important because you do need to actually publish your content and get it out there on the web. Now, you might find it hard to believe, but I've actually forgotten this step before. And then like a week later, I'm like, oh my God, I forgot to publish that blog post or make that video public, that kind of thing. So it can happen. I don't have to tell you that things come up, You, you know, you got a fire, you got a this, you got a that, things you forget about it. So you need to make sure that this makes the list that you actually publish the content and make the content visible actually on the web. You need to launch it. You need to get it out there so people can actually see it. Now, you would be surprised, or maybe you wouldn't be, at how many people quit after the publish step. But there's one more critical P for content creation. Promote. Promote. People skip over this step all the time. And there's a line from the movie, Field of Dreams, if you build it, they will come. Well, that's somewhat true. You know, depending on how well optimized your site is for SEO, okay, maybe it will be grabbed by uh, Google or search engines. Um, again, if we're uh, talking about video and YouTube, that kind of thing, maybe it will grab and be put in recommended feeds, things like that. So it's somewhat true. And there may be people who discover it through search and recommendation, but let's not leave that to chance. You need to post this content on social media, share it with your newsletter, send it to your clients. If it's a video, put it in a blog post and put it on your site, right? So don't just, you've put in all the work, creating it, tweaking it, editing it, blah, 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 blah. You hit publish and then you walk away. Don't just walk away. You need to be sure to actively promote your content and remember, you can promote content more than once, even on the same platform. Different days, different times, different captions, different images. You can get the most juice for your squeeze. Keep sharing your content. It's not just a one and done type thing. Okay, so final thoughts. Well, now that you know all the four Ps, plan, produce, publish, promote, you know, let's kind of take a step back and remember the pizza. Going back to the beginning, I don't want you to just say, today I'm gonna make a pizza. I mean, it sounds delicious. I'm sorry if you're watching this and I've made you want pizza. I'm not actually that sorry. Good for you, eat some pizza. Instead, I want you to say, I wanna make a pizza what are the things I need to do to make that happen? Now, in case I lost you, let me just 
be abundantly clear here. When I say pizza, I actually referring to content. Okay. So say I want to make content. What are the things I need to do to make that happen? So let's go through these steps. And you may be saying, Oh, Ross, eight steps. That's a lot of work. Well, here's the thing. These are the eight steps you need to do, whether you recognize them or not. So if you're not going to actively work through these steps, this is the stuff you have to do. So you either have the choice to be on top of it and track it, space it out, right? Not all these things have to be done in a day. That's the, uh, that's the big thing I want you to take away from this is you can space these tasks out in small pieces and it helps to do that because if you don't, you get back to being overwhelmed by like, oh, wow, okay, I have an hour today. I'm gonna do all these things to successfully make content. You probably won't. Break it into small pieces, starting with identifying the topic. What the, what the heck are you talking about? What's the subject? What's the topic? Outline it. We talked about this, make your headers, make your key points that you want to hit. Work on your first draft. Now, I didn't include it as a step, but you remember first draft, you can then step away, take a break, come back to it, do your final draft. With a blog, this is writing, with a video, this would be editing it together. Translate it to the web. Take your words or your video and put it on your blog or on YouTube or whatever video platform respectively that you use. Publish it, make it visible to the world. And then we have promote. And you'll notice here that promote while being kind of one function is multiple steps. Because I think it's important for you to very much specify, okay, I'm gonna promote on LinkedIn today. And then tomorrow I'm going to put this up on Twitter. And then Friday, I'm going to put this on my Facebook page, right? And then on next week, Wednesday, I'm going to put it in my email, right? To my clients. So very specify specifically, specify specifically. I think that's <laughs> which platforms on what days and times you're going to promote this content on. I think that's very, that is a very helpful thing because if you say share, it's too nonspecific. You'll do it, you'll do it on one platform and you'll forget and you won't do it on the other ones. Now, these have been the four P's. Breaking this down, you now also have right here the very specific steps that you can use. If you still feel like I don't even know what to write about, I don't even know. Um, what to talk about. I don't know how to do this. I don't know what my customers are curious in. I don't know what kind of video or, or, or blogs I should be writing. Guys, girls, you got to join me in the Marketing Clarity Coaching. You have to. If you ha are, as I say, lost in the digital marketing fog, you don't know how to talk to your customers, you don't know their their, their fears, their frustrations, their problems, your solutions. You don't know why you should matter to them. If you don't know what content you should be strategically creating, if you don't know how to position yourself so that you are the solution for your target audience, you need to sign up for the Digital Marketing Clarity Coaching. And you can do that. You can learn more about it by going to getmarketingclarity.com. Here are all the details. And I don't charge you for a consultation. If you keep scrolling down to the bottom, all we need is 15 minutes. Book some time. 15 minutes is all I ask. And we can figure out if this program is a good fit for you. I am not about forcing program, this program onto people who it's not a good fit for, who it's not going to help. That doesn't do anything for me. It doesn't do anything for you. This has to be something where we can work together. And that's what we go through in that 15 minute call. Again, that's a super, just no time at all for you to really figure out if you can finally get that marketing clarity. So until next time, 
I'm Ross Erosion, Tricycle Creative, Marketing Coach, Content Creator. I encourage you to keep pedaling.